United, uh, let's talk about it because uh, just the latest airline to announce mass flight cancellations. The airline says it'll cut 50 daily flights from its Newark airport starting July 1st. But the reason cited in this case is capacity constraints, airport construction, air traffic control, not staffing. For more on these ongoing flight cancellations, I want to welcome Sarah Nelson, international president of the Association of Flight Attendants, representing nearly 50,000 flight attendants at 20 airlines. It's roughly half of the industry. I want to thank you for joining us. Look, and, and this United thing may be idiosyncratic uh, to, it, it's to what's happening in Newark, but I think there's a broader thing we need to talk about, Sarah. And you've heard us talk about it on this table ad nauseum, which is there was a bailout program. You advocated for that program specifically for the airlines. Uh, you said that if we didn't do it, uh, they would be in trouble. The economy would be in trouble. Everything would be terrible. It was a necessary evil to, to, to go down this path. We went down this path. And here we are, and every day you hear about a just remarkable number of cancellations that are impacting people's lives, daily lives, the, the customers' lives, the taxpayers' lives, uh, with no compensation, no recompense, no nothing. And there's something wrong in the system. And I want to understand what you think that is, because something is not right. Well, first of all, Andrew, I wouldn't call the workers' first package a necessary evil. I think that it was historic, and it is being celebrated around the world as the best relief program that was in place. It went directly to the workers, kept us in our jobs, and uh, kept us paying into the tax system. And that all came back to the American people. The airlines would have collapsed and gone into bankruptcies without it, and we would be in a much worse position. But what is going on, and, and let me just say, too, that I have a lot of empathy for both the people on the front lines who are dealing with the conditions this summer and also the travelers who are trying to get somewhere. Love to see the celebration of the SWAT graduations. I was working really hard to get someone from Chicago to the East Coast so that they could make a graduation today. And we just barely made it after two days of trying last night. So I'm glad about that. Uh, but, you know, this is a perfect storm, Andrew. We have a lot of things going on. We have the fact that the airlines had cut back uh, to minimums before coronavirus. There is no give in the system. So all of the staffing were already at minimum levels before we went into COVID. And that doesn't give us a lot of room to make changes when we get to that. There were staffing cuts across the board. So the operational support that is there for, for the workers on the front lines and for passengers, frankly, to get through to someone uh, when their flight is canceled is not staffed at the same levels that they were before either. This is an area where the airlines could really uh, do something about this. You brought up the issue of Newark, which, uh, it, you know, in the whole Northeastern corridor, it is a different story than the rest of the country, but it has an impact on the rest of the country when you can't get planes out of there and can't get people to their connections. And the FAA is not enforcing the slot requirements, not enforcing the rules, and they need right. to get back to doing that. But so what do you think is supposed to happen here? Because from a passenger perspective, from a customer perspective, from a taxpayer perspective, it doesn't look like it's working. It looks like it's a broken system that is failing well, the American people, failing well, it them. Did, so it did work, Andrew, and it's summer, too. And, and let's, let's remember, there's a lot of things going on here. So um, American Airlines, I do want to recognize that they saw that We've got two different systems here. We have the mainline flying. We have the regional flying there. Uh, we have the issue of getting pilots who are getting hired into the mainline uh, operations. That's American, Delta, uh, Alaska, Southwest, and, um, and United. And they are working on training them. It takes longer to train pilots. There were also planes that were sitting on the ground, and, and pilots could not retain their qualifications as those big planes were sitting on the ground, and that is some of this, too. Uh, and uh, we also have the problem of attracting people to the jobs. So the regional, the feeder airlines that come from Sarah, smaller all cities— all this just sounds like you're throwing your hands up in the air saying, well, woe is me. I, I don't like think so at all. And I can't really identify— I don't think so at all. So I want to tell you good news, Andrew. What would you do about this? And, 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 how would you you hold, and how would you hold— management at these companies yeah. to account. Yeah. So I want to tell you some good news. So American Airlines recognized this, worked with us on an incentive program over the summer and brought the pay up so that we can attract people to the jobs at those at that regional flying. Other airlines can do that as well. They can also it's, it's really important. We need to address what's happening right now. 
and um, cutting back capacity so that they're not having people come to the airport and miss their flights and then reaccommodating them on other flights and planning so that people are not stranded at airports is a really important move right now. And the airlines need to be doing that more. They need to be looking at that capacity and what they can actually handle and not overpromise here. And they um, and we also need that operational support. So there's a lot that can be done at the airlines. What do you right say now. about 